Hey guys, how are you going? Um, this morning I'm really excited to be here with Sarah from Basilee Living Herbs uh, at her property at Birkengary. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly hand over to Sarah so that she can explain uh, what type of property she has here. So I live in a rural residential property in sort of the outer suburbs of Brisbane and I have a little treasure of a dynamic herb and edible flower farm using best practice from organic growing as well as hydroponic growing, permaculture, really the things that work um, uh, for me uh, using low chemicals and low sprays uh, so that I can produce the best herbs and edible flowers ethically and efficiently as well. <laughs> that was well done. Got it all, all the information in a concise couple of sentences. That was really well done. Thank you. Because it is such a unique, and you, you've kind of, you know, you've brought together so many different practices into the one farm. So yeah, to cool. make it work the way you want it to work. So. Yeah. From um, I've been growing for 18 years now, mm -hmm. um, and I've been able to, you know, watch how plants grow and yes. how they, what they need to be able to do that. Yeah. Um, and you know, they need each other. You know herbs um, have companionship with each other. You do have um, symbiotic herbs that do need to be growing close to other things and other ones that need to be on their own. So um, but yeah, the world of growing is a fantastic thing and um, being, having so much knowledge of being on farm, yes. practicing yes. Um, all these things, yeah, I've been able and to bring all that together. Too. Yeah, that you've been able to be in the same industry for such a long time now. Well, it's a you passion. Know. Yes. <laughs> It's great. It's great. <laughs> More the yeah, the passion that turned into a great vocation. So I'm very, very grateful. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's fantastic. Um, it's wonderful this space that you've got here um, out of Burpengary uh, in Queensland, and I'm um, really excited to be joined today by Sarah because she's doing something that's really unique as well, like in the way of um, probably not something that everyone is really familiar with, and that is eating flowers. Um, and what kinds of flowers we can eat. Um, so I'll just um, hand over to Sarah and just uh, so she can explain a little bit about what she does. So um, originally a herb grower and through my customers down um, in Brisbane there was this big demand for edible flowers and edible flowers and herbs kind of go a bit hand in hand. Mm -hmm. A large majority of the flowers, of edible flowers of course, are edible plants. Um, there was call for people to realise that there are a lot of plants that are edible, however with our nursery industries the way they are and our desire for the perfect plant, there are a lot of edible flowers that are sold as potted colour um, from our major commercial nurseries mm -hmm. and they are plants that have been sprayed with pesticides and systemic pesticides so those are ones that you need to stay away from and really do search out your organic um, and spray free uh, growers to get those plants to be able to have um, edible flowers for yourself. Otherwise, those that don't want to grow, you can still use edible flowers because there are um, a growing demand of edible flowers being supplied through fruit shops for you to be able to purchase and, and use on your cakes or um, in cooking and, and different things like that. So. Yeah, definitely. And I have been noticing that like at local delis and whatnot, like I'm pretty sure it's your flowers actually. <laughs> In little We're quite around, <laughs> yeah, getting there. Yeah, <laughs> All over the yeah so um, if you're interested in purchasing some edible flowers that Sarah herself has grown and um, distributed, we'll definitely put some links in the um, at the bottom of the YouTube clip anyway. So. Yeah, so that would be good. But yeah, so we're also having tea because my channel is called Tea with Plants and I... We're grown here yeah. at Basilee. <laughs> so I've actually got um, calendula in here, which is Beautiful. an edible flower. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't quite got any at hand to be able to show you what it looks like. <laughs> Um, but calendula is actually an edible flower that has been used for centuries, not only for the oh, um, fact that it's wonderful and colourful, um, mm -hmm. adds colour to meals, mm -hmm. but it does have a lot of medicinal properties. You'll find in a lot of your massage creams, um, ma uh, sort of uh, moisturisers yeah. and washes and stuff. You'll find a lot of calendula yeah. um, making around. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I have heard that it's great for your skin and your complexion and, and um, yeah. Fabulous and tea. It is. It <laughs> tastes beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, um, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I thought today would be a great opportunity um, for those of us who are not really that familiar with 
which plants um, produce edible flowers. We could maybe go through a few specific plants and Sarah can explain a little bit about what they are, their names and we'll go So through. I've got this wonderful bouquet over here, not just pretty but also edible. Um, in here I've got one of, I um, can't quite recognise it I guess, but this is coriander. So coriander is one of the world's most popular herbs. And we do have a lot of people that come to me and say, how can I grow coriander? It always goes to flower. And I say, well, there's nothing wrong with it going to flower because the flowers are edible and um, very, very pretty. So they're beautiful, white, fluffy clouds on there. Mm -hmm. have a yeah, that. fantastic. So, beautiful, white, fluffy clouds. And these also have the taste of coriander. So like your leaves, like your roots, everything of the coriander um, plant can be um, edible the seeds as well once the flowers um, if you do let them go you actually get the seed developing which is these beautiful green balls which are also fantastic as a garnish or something that can put be put as a bit of greenery mm. on but they're tiny little balls they can be kept in their little rosettes um, but absolutely fantastic and have that citrusy um, coriander smell and taste to them Oh, which do, means yeah. that you can use this flower on both savoury and sweet dishes if you wanted to. Yeah, fantastic. Um, yeah, because flowers are, aren't just sweet and they do have a wide range. You've got nasturtiums that are peppery and that, that do lend themselves to, to savoury things. Mm -hmm. Another one of those that lends itself to savoury is this one. And you will find this um, quite a lot uh, on um, nature strips. So the... Queensland Transport have a lot of these society garlics growing everywhere because they are something that is just really hardy plant. Mm -hmm. um, and they have these beautiful um, flowers that taste like garlic. So I did have once a, a young young junior chef that had a whole mix of flowers come through and he, um, he went and put one of these on a muffin. He did have a customer. Wow, it's very garlic. <laughs> it's very garlic. -y. He did have a customer that said, no, 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 no. This flower shouldn't go on on the muffin. And he said, no, I don't want these anymore. But I did have to give him a bit of a knowledge to say, well, this flower is not a sweet flower. It is a savoury flower. So if you could imagine just on a plain pizza mm. base with a bit of cheese um, and these sprinkled with a bit more herbs, basil and things like that, you've got a savoury um, a savoury flower meal yeah. or, or a dish that's really really lovely that and really lovely. something that's very easy to grow but as I have mentioned before where well, you do need to be careful where you source your flowers yeah from. I was gonna say that actually yeah so yeah. of course all of these beautiful society garlics that are in the middle of the of roundabouts <laughs> and on the side of on the verge gardens unfortunately because we do have um, spraying happening in the Brisbane City Council limits and, and other shires that mm. um, Stay away from those plants. <laughs> Do get something else um, that's from an organic crop so that you can enjoy love. And I guess also, let alone the fumes from the cars that are driving past, yeah. I mean, it's probably not fantastic either. Well, well that's it. Um, plants in general, they yeah. do suck up all yeah. of that and they send out the freshness. Yes. So they're, they are filters. They are and filters. you do need to yeah. be just wary of that. <laughs> Of that. Yeah, but very garlicky. I can't actually believe Ooh. how garlicky they are. Really so, lovely. if anyone happens to be allergic to garlic specifically, can they eat that instead, or is it like? Well, because it's from the same family, it oh, would have to be what's the, the aspect of um, the garlic that you're allergic to, whether mm. or not the flower has what the bulb that's does. Same. That's something that's going into the realm of study yes. that I'm not quite yeah. there yet. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Because I just know um, one time at the Queensland Herb Society, you spoke about the mushroom plant yeah and the mushroom plant you can eat because it's not a fungal um, yeah. plant it's not so. a fungi so yeah, yeah different um, families of plants and they the way they grow differently mm -hmm. um, fungi are a whole sets of different plants that um, grow very very differently to a, a green to um, a stalky plant so Absolutely, yeah. yeah the the fungi um, yeah you do have the mushroom plant mm. as your savior that yeah really if you do yeah. like mushrooms yeah. there is a mushroom plant <laughs> yeah. if you can't have fungi yeah there is an alternative and yeah i can give you more information about that yeah, don't know. <laughs> another gem of knowledge yeah there's quite a bit up, up, up there um but yeah going on from there are you know there's the savory flowers but sweet flowers as well and the cosmos so this is another one that's quite commonly put out as a pot of color 
that do um, read the back of the label. You'll actually find on those commercial, um, the commercial nurseries, on their labelling, it will actually have not for human consumption, and that is a big red light yes. that it's been sprayed because that they're well aware um, that those plants are not not for eating. Yes. Uh, so uh, yeah, do do be wary of of that. But cosmos in all its beautiful glory. Um, is an edible flower and I love this one because it's got to taste like musk. Yeah. Got to taste like musk. So there are a few different varieties of Cosmos that you can get. Um, one with variegation as well as the bright bold pinks. Um, and they just, they smell fantastic. And this is the one that I do get excited for with crystallizing. Yes. When you crystallize flowers, mm -hmm. this one with the, just that little bit of added sugar to it really does taste like a musk oh, wally yes. and in doing the sh crystallizing you're actually preserving um, the flower so rather than having sort of a day use out of it yes uh, you can get up to six months of, wow. of longevity with it and then definitely a whole day um, on a cake out in display and, yeah uh, in hot weather <laughs> in hot weather yeah. um, with, with having that done yeah that's yeah, wonderful yeah so a few of my favourites, and yeah, some that aren't so so known. We do have um, you know, quite a lot with the marigolds that you find quite often everywhere. Yes. I get a savoury one that has a peppery sort of taste to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just a few. And I know that you also spoke at your workshop about the... Um, the violas. The violas, yeah. yeah. So they're also edible, aren't they? They are edible. You'll find, again, the pot of colour. A lot of violas are in, in pot of colour. Um, and they're annual, so with pot of colour, um, they're all pretty much annual plants. And because of that systemic um, spray that stays with them throughout their lifetime, um, you really do need to um, source out the violets from um, a, an organic um, grower, someone who doesn't spray. Um, but they are fantastic. You do get a, a wide range of colours um, going from blues, um, purples, uh, oranges as well. So really, and then large ones. We've got the pansies, which are, are larger in the family, mm -hmm. going down to very, very little um, violas. Yeah, beautiful. Very lovely. And the wonderful one is there's a particular type of viola called Johnny Jump Up. And with the Johnny Jump Ups, they actually excrete a dye. So you can uh, heat treat those with a little bit of um, water, like making a tea. Mm -hmm. And the, the dye, the violet dye from the flowers actually comes out. Comes out that. into the water. And it's yeah. fantastic. It is, yeah. I have, have had a lot of fun making that into jams and cordials. Yeah, I can imagine. And yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to try, try and say goodbye again because uh, just before we tried to say goodbye and the gazebo almost flew away. So, yeah. <laughs> guess it's another spring, The spring rains in Brisbane. <laughs> yeah. Unpredictable weather, to say the least. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just wanted to uh, thank Sarah for having us here on her property today. It's been wonderful to learn a little bit more about the world of flowers and um, their beauty and, and which ones we can eat and incorporate into our lives. Um, and as and you were enjoy. saying, yeah, and enjoy. And enjoy, not only in the garden as you're growing them, but be able to take them inside. Um, and yeah, enjoy them again in your food. And it is quite easy to just add them in there, you know, the salads that we're having, just to add those pearls in there. To get a bit of extra nutrition from the herbs and, and the, the flowers from themselves. And then, um, yeah, be able to whiz all of your friends. Go, look what I do that. <laughs> yeah. Look what I can do now. But of course, we, if, you're, if you're not a gardener, there are um, flowers available out in, in stores that you can purchase and um, order through custom orders okay. uh, to be able to put on your cakes and for your special occasions, all that kind of thing. And so you can provide those through your website, do you? Um, yeah, you, yeah. You can order through your website if you want to get specific flowers for yeah. an occasion or something yeah, like we, that. We often, I need pink flowers, I <laughs> yeah. need this flowers. I want a lot of people wanting purple flowers, which is perfect because purple is my favourite colour and there's a lot of purple so flowers. There's a lot of <laughs> That's so, yeah, there's um, absolutely, if you're looking for something, we'll do our best to be able to um, supply you with what's in season at the time. Wonderful. Okay, well, um, I'll definitely put um, all of Sarah's details um, under the video uh, and you can check out her website and all the amazingness on there. So, yeah, fantastic. Well, have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.